Hi, and welcome to the, another Waterbury Hospital podcast. I'm Jeremy Rodrigo, your host, and joining me today is Ashley McLean. She is the founder of the Linked Autism Safety Project, and she's some, doing some amazing work in the field with uh, our police and fire departments and EMS responders, and she's bringing that work here to Waterbury Hospital, and also our uh, patient experience coordinator here at Waterbury Hospital, Misha Essan, and Misha and, and Ashley and I are going to talk about um, persons with autism and specifically persons with autism that come into our hospital for care and how we want to do everything we can to take care of them and treat them the way that they should be treated and uh, make them as comfortable as possible, especially when they're in a situation that is difficult, a health emergency or a medical emergency. So, Ashley, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. So, first, Ashley, tell me a little bit about the linked autism safety project because i know that you started it but tell me a little bit of where it came from and how it evolved and all that stuff absolutely so i am the mom of two children um my son colton who is seven he's on the spectrum mm -hmm. so we've had some i'll call them unique interactions with law enforcement um in regards to care that we needed at specific times um and it really prompted me to start thinking about supports i'm also the daughter of a retired first responder mm -hmm. um and i think of my father as firefighter bob versus grandpa bob and he was all Although the same person, two very different people in those roles. And a lot of that thought process and conversations really prompted me to put something in place to not only support first responders, but to be able to support families. And back in January of last year, I reached out to my local police department in North Brantford just to let them know that my son was on the spectrum. Um, and that initial email prompted a number of different conversations where we ultimately put together a program that launched in June of last year. And now we're partnered both locally, statewide, and nationally with a number of different first responders. So, so I took your training because mm -hmm. I am a first responder too. Uh, I took your training, and it was it was I, I really enjoyed the the background that you gave about some of the experiences you had with law enforcement mm -hmm. that weren't so great. Right, and it wasn't the way you articulated. It wasn't that they were being mean; right. they just didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Right. And now you're bringing that understanding to them. And that's um, and, and I'm an EMS first responder. So it was it was really interesting for me as an EMS responder to hear about your challenges and, the, and some of the things you overcame. So what is it that you do with first responders um, to educate them? Yeah. So we have a couple of different things that we do as a program. Um, we provide a voluntary registration form to departments where it allows families to share information with that department about their loved one that they care for. Anything from demographic information, medical information, triggers, behaviors, likes, dislikes. Um, and then for families that fill out the forms, we provide, again, the police department, fire, um, EMS with a family emergency planning folder, and that assists the family in what to do in an emergency situation. For the specific departments, we provide sensory bags that have a number of different therapeutic tools, resources, communication tools that they can use in an interaction that they would be having with a person with autism. Um, and really, I think the biggest thing is the training that we provide to the departments and understanding how to use those resources, how to identify an individual with autism. Um, if you have information ahead of time, how to use that information to make it the best possible outcome for the first responder and for the individual. Um, and then we also do sensory-friendly public safety days where we introduce the two communities of first responders and individuals with intellectual, cognitive, physical disabilities to one another. So the first time that they're interacting is not necessarily in a high-stress situation. During the emergency. Right. That's amazing work. And Thank you. one of the things I work with Nisha here at the hospital, and she's very concerned with patient experience and wants to make sure that people have the best experience possible when they're at the hospital. And she identified that maybe we could be doing more for pa persons with autism. And so uh, Misha actually prompted me to get in touch with you um, way back when you did some training for our, for our uh, team. And we're also going to be launching these bags that you carry, these kits, Some. Yeah, for our emergency room and for our inpatient units, really, too. So because we take care of a number of uh, patients, both, pe both pediatric and adult, who are uh, on the autism spectrum, and we want to make sure that the, their experience is the best it can possibly be for both the provider and for the patient, Absolutely. and of course, in their family. So, Misha, tell us a little bit about why this is important 
for you as the coordinator of patient experience? So this is important because um, I have met with patients who are on the spectrum and they feel that they are not being heard or not being seen or they're not um, necessarily understood. Also, I am a mother of a child who is on the spectrum and I've been in situations where we've been in the emergency room and we've been in doctor's offices and he is not understood and something something small may trigger a behavior and there's not enough resources to combat the behavior. So he may be perceived as being hostile or angry and that that's not necessarily the case. He's just not understood. So um, this this is important for me, not only because that's what I see in patient experience, but that's also um, what I live as a mother to a child with autism. So you have kind of a unique experience from both sides of it. And what we want to do here, and I, and I think that this will translate very well over from the from the first responder side to the hospital side, because a lot of it is similar. Uh, can you show us a little bit about what's in the kit and how, and we don't have to go through the whole training because mm -hmm. we don't have enough time, but uh, <laughs> how some of these things work you know, yeah. and some of these things are a benefit for the patient and for, for the people caring for the patient. Absolutely. I think the first piece, and I'll kind of pull this out, is we have what we call picture exchange communication tools. Um, it's a card that allows prompts for individuals that either are not speaking, have difficulty communicating, um, a tool to be able to initiate conversation with a first responder or hospital staff member. Um, communication looks extremely different on anybody that's on the spectrum. So sometimes it might be, just like Nisha was saying, not being understood and not being able to have the ability to communicate, especially when you're scared or worried. So these pet cards, as we call them, give prompts for uh, demographic information, yes or no prompts, um, how a person is feeling, uh, what a person might need as well too. And really simply by introducing something as simple as, you know, these laminated sheets, it's introducing trust and respect that the individual on the spectrum has with the person that they're interacting with, right. because that that person is now showing them something that they know provides them a basic need and provides them a basic sense of comfort. So they know they can trust that person immediately because they have a tool that they know how to use. And did you develop these? So I actually worked with a um, speech pathologist, the autism helper, um, and she created these. We we worked together and I kind of told her my thought process behind them. Um, and she actually travels the country and works with different schools um, and giving them resources. And she created these with, you know, my guidance. And very simple, low tech. 100%. You know, easy to carry around, doesn't require batteries. Nothing at all. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Very simple. Um, and then to kind of go alongside with that, a simple dry erase board, marker, eraser um, that individuals can use if they don't have the language at the time, they can write the information down. Mm -hmm. um, I know for my son, when he's more comfortable writing something down, it's easier for him to get his message out, if you yeah. will. And again, whiteboards are used in therapeutic setting, the school setting. So another tool that's easily introduced to these individuals because they already know how to use it. Um, we also have noise canceling headphones. We have light sensitivity glasses for any individual that has a heightened sense around either noise or light provides them that support immediately. Just again, to be able to be comfortable, not necessarily as scared. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of my favorites. It's a body soft, if you will. The best way I describe it is a big elasticized snuggie. Um, so it helps with pressure on the body. I know my son loves to be squeezed if he's kind of feeling overwhelmed. So that might not necessarily be able to happen in a high stress situation, but this kind of gives that same relief yeah. um, and gives that person a sense of safety. Yeah. And this time. is not a restraint. This no, is, this is a, something to make them Comfort, comfort, absolutely. Right. You know, when I'm putting bags together at my house, I actually have to hide these from my son you because do. he. I was putting bags together the other night and he said, Mama, purple, purple. He kept telling me he wanted the purple one and right. I had to move them to another room so he couldn't use them. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah, that sense of comfort, that sense of safety, that sense of support that this person feels just by using a tool like this. Mm -hmm. um, and then each bag has a large poppet, a fun fidget for the individuals to play with. And then we have a smaller bag of different types of sensory toys. Um, I actually call them tools. They look like toys, but yeah. they're tools that these individuals can use to um, de-stress, 
bring down their anxiety if they're feeling overwhelmed, um, overstimulated, especially in a high stress situation. You know, they're fun little noisemakers. You can kind of pull these apart, pop it, squeeze. Um, yeah. But again, they're not just fun little toys. They're really meant to allow a person to focus more on what's being asked of them, calm down when they're overwhelmed. This, you know, fun multicolor pop, it can actually do so much for an individual on the spectrum. It's not just a, a bright, fun little toy for them to play with. And for us as a hospital, and I think Misha would agree, um, this is, you know, this is a, a, a bag, of, a, a tool bag, basically, mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. And we're going to train our staff on what the best, most appropriate use of these are. And there'll be some trial and error, I'm sure. And you're going to provide some training for us, of course, too. How do you feel about bringing this into the organization? I, I love this, actually, um, especially the text cards. My son uses the PIX the PIX bar, so I can really very much suit to that. And also the headphones. Um, not everything here my son uses, but um I did definitely see it, especially working with children with autism and seeing them. I also worked through the school system and get to see what what is successful with working with people on the spectrum. And the thing with a lot of people on the spectrum, they love routine, familiarity, and then now they're in a situation where it's high stress. It's right. different. It's different faces. It's different people. So this brings that comfort for them. So I actually love everything about this. And um, I think it will be super effective here at the hospital. And um, I'm going to, I actually think it's super effective for me also. So I have a bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a bag. You can make that work. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is the thing is, when we're taking care of patients who come in accident, illness, we're seeing patients that are acutely, acutely ill, and maybe they came in by ambulance or by private car, and they're not feeling good anyway, and it's a high-stress in, in environment anyway or situation anyway, and we want to do everything we can to communicate well with both family and patient, but also care for them. And I, I've only taken that I know of in my many years at EMS, I took care of one uh, young man who was autistic and um, he broke his leg and he was uh, five years, four or five years old. And it was, a, it was a stressful environment for him and for me. I, you know, all I wanted was provide comfort and care for him. And I think he just, it was, it was, I think more difficult uh, for him than, um, you know, another five-year-old it might have been. And and for us, we, you know, as caregiver, we wanted to provide him with as much comfort as possible. And I wish that I had had this at the time because I'm sure he was in a lot of pain in an environment where he's high stress, people he doesn't know taking care of him. Of course, his mom was there with him. But, it, you know, and I think as our caregivers in the emergency room and in the inpatient units can better understand the population that we're serving, I think. It goes a long way. I, and I think that's a big piece of it as well, too. You know, having these tools available are huge for the individual. But as a parent, if I'm looking at a first responder or a caregiver and they have an awareness of my son or yeah. they've taken five or ten minutes to listen to somebody talk about autism or an intellectual cognitive disability, um, I have a little bit more ease going into yeah. that situation um, because I'm already heightened because my son is now heightened um, and it just, it doesn't make for a positive outcome for anybody. But if I know that someone took that extra time is willing to kind of listen and learn about my son and his differences, if you will, it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable as a parent and a little bit more trusting as well too. Yeah. And I think this is our goal here, right? This is our goal. It's to make our patients feel comfortable and safe and their families feel comfortable and safe so they can get the care that they need. You were going to say? Um, so these tools, they're really good with autism, but they're also good across the border. You know, um, Waterbury is very diverse, not just Waterbury, um, everywhere is more diverse. People are changing, things are changing. And um, it, it, this, these are tools that will help us, not just with children on the spectrum, but it will go across the border because there's, there's many other um disorders and um there's many other things out there and like they say once you've met one person with autism you've only met one person with autism it, it's it's a spectrum so there's different behaviors there's different triggers right. there's different there's many different experiences so i think this is going to be so helpful to not just 
the autism community across the board. Across the board. And what, oh, as I was saying, one of the things we actually just kind of announced and shared this weekend, our program was built around my experience with autism, mm -hmm. around my son and kind of what we're learning through the process. Um, but as we've grown over the last year, we don't want to limit it to just autism. So our voluntary registration form, it was the linked autism alert form. Well, now it's just, not just, but the linked uh uh, safety form as well. So it goes to the different departments and we want to be inclusive of different diagnoses um, for all individuals, not just children, mm -hmm. um, but we don't want it to limit to just autism, just like you were saying. And even with neurotypical uh, children, um, I just got a text message from a police officer last week. She was at a car accident at a scene and the child was not on the spectrum. However, the poppet made the child feel much more comfortable when the airbag went off and he was crying uncontrollably. So it could be used in a variety of different ways. And and we're just grateful that it is being used to support individuals. Yeah, I, I was speaking with uh, Jay Piccarello at the Beacon Falls Police. Mm -hmm. I know that you did work with yes. Beacon Falls Police, and Jay was talking about an incident that happened with him, and it was just, it made all the difference in the, in the positive outcome of the Absolutely. experience. And that one interaction is now going to uh, create positive interactions moving forward because you can have one bad experience with a whether it's a police officer, a firefighter, a paramedic, but that individual may not know the difference. They've now kind of lumped all first responders because of that negative experience, if yeah. you will. So trying to change those negative experiences and providing many more positives so that they know that they can trust individuals like you. Well, we're proud to have this, to bring this into our hospital. Do you have any other hospitals that are doing this yet? Not as of yet, no. So we're proud to be the first uh, hospital that is introducing the linked autism safety project materials into our hospitals to better care for our patients. I appreciate you taking the time today to talk okay. about it. Misha, thank you as always. And the wonderful work you do with our patients every single day here is amazing. Um, that's all for now. I want to thank Ashley McLean from the Linked Autism Safety Project and Misha Asan, our director of our, I'm sorry, our coordinator of patient experience here at Waterbury Hospital. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you.